Thank you for joining us for a brief update on the first quarter 2022 markets and outlook. I'm Tim Chubb, Chief Investment Officer here at Girard. We're pleased to share this new look for our quarterly investment currents call and hope you find it useful and accessible. In future quarters, we expect to offer additional videos with bite-sized commentary of topics of interest to you. Please feel free to reach out to us by visiting meetgerard.com to learn more about how we can partner to help you pursue your financial goals. Let's begin with a review of the global markets, which were challenged across the board in the first quarter of the year. You'll see that all major diversified benchmarks declined by 5% or more, with little distinction between stocks and bonds, U.S. and international. Equity markets peaked in early January as continued inflation and supply chain challenges continue to spook investors. In February, Russia's invasion of Ukraine upended the geopolitical landscape, with oil briefly moving above $130 a barrel. Emerging markets in particular were hit both from the Russia exposure, but also with fears of lower growth and increased instability in emerging economies. By early March, major indices, including the S&P 500, found themselves in a correction, defined as down 10% from its prior peak. While mid-March saw a significant rally off the bottom as the Fed's first rate hike was received positively, we've lost some ground of the momentum in the early half of April. Digging deeper into the S&P 500 performance by sector, we find growth leaders like communication services, consumer discretionary and technology sectors, all down in the 10% range. While energy was up nearly 40%, it represents just 5% of the index and was not much of a help. This along with the strength in utilities drove a significant divergence between growth and value styles. As the first quarter earnings season has now kicked off, we continue to see companies with strong financial positions and pricing power selling to consumers with pent up demand and rising wages. Consensus for corporate earnings growth remains around 8 to 10% this year, and the forward-looking price-to-earnings ratio for the S&P 500 has declined to almost 19, much closer to its long-term average. Offsetting this is the reality that supply chains continue to remain constrained, and slowing economic growth could be further stifled by the Fed policy missteps as they take on the historic inflation challenge. While investors generally understand that investing in stocks entails risk and plenty of volatility, we usually do not expect the same from the bond market. The first quarter was historic, with the worst performance in fixed income markets in nearly 40 years. Many investors view fixed income markets in two different buckets, a risk-reducing investment-grade core and a return-seeking satellite that is more equity-like with exposure to high-yield bonds or those corporate bonds below investment grade, international, and other risk assets. Unfortunately, both of these areas of the market were hit at the same time, which is somewhat unusual. This was driven by interest rates moving higher as the 10-year Treasury yield moved up nearly a percentage point to 2.38% as investors demanded higher returns in the face of persistent inflation. The time of this recording, the 10-year has now reached closer to 3%. Over time, return-seeking categories like high yield can buffer the impact of higher rates and tightening spreads where the compensation an investor requires for credit risk above Treasuries with higher income, but it's not as easily seen here in the short term. Bond yields move inversely to prices. Looking ahead, global bonds are now trading below par or their redemption value for the first time since 2008. This creates an opportunity for capital appreciation on top of higher income generated as a result of higher rates. As we sit today, expectations are for the Fed to raise rates by another 250 basis points. While these hikes have been largely priced into the fixed income markets, there remains a risk the Fed will need to do even more to be aggressive to rein in inflation, and as a result, we remain cautious, encouraging investors to limit their bond allocation to what is necessary from a risk tolerance and risk capacity standpoint. While we find ourselves with significant uncertainty due to the inflationary impacts and how the Federal Reserve may respond, the economy is doing well and growing. While we certainly have high inflation, real economic growth remains above trend thanks to unemployment rate falling to 3.8% and a staggering 11 million job openings remaining unfilled. American households have also seen wages grow in nearly 6% year over year, which bodes well for spending capacity, as well as their net worth reaching all-time highs during the first quarter as financial obligations as a percentage of net worth reach an all-time low. These factors should support the consumer and the broader economy as we work through the worst of the inflation velocity. When markets struggle as they have, investors often search for one category or asset class that will outperform for a specific outcome. But it turns out that in times of uncertainty, it pays to be more diversified, not less. A counter-momentum trading strategy that adds to positions that have been weaker and reduces those that have outperformed is an important tool in keeping risk levels relatively stable. It is time to deeply assess your goals, your risk tolerance, and return needs to make sure that they are tuned for the long run, not for the noise of the short-term volatility. Thank you for spending time with us and reach out by visiting meetgerard.com.